Alrighty, welcome back to Bumblebee. I'm your host, Taylor McWaters. We're going back in time for this one. Here are the top 10 unusual events from the Roaring Twenties. Are we in the Roaring Twenties right now? I don't think so. It doesn't feel very roar-like. Number 10, President Edith Wilson. In the year 1919, President Woodrow Wilson experienced a severe stroke that greatly impacted his abilities. However, instead of publicly disclosing this information, this very personal information, the government chose to maintain secrecy, believing that it was in the best interest of the nation. Now, what happened next was pretty amazing. The public remained unaware of Wilson's stroke for several months, but during this time, Edith Wilson took on a significant role in making executive decisions on his behalf. So in retrospect, historians now acknowledge that Mrs. Wilson effectively assumed the role of one U.S. president for the remainder of Wilson's term. This remarkable circumstance highlights the fact that a woman, Edith Wilson, effectively held the reins of the country's leadership through the year 1920, which is amazing. We don't talk about that nearly enough. Number nine, stay thirsty. On January 16th, 1920, the 18th Amendment to the Constitution of the United States came into effect, initiating the era known as the Prohibition. This was a sad one. This was a pretty... Pretty lousy one right here. This amendment outlawed the sale of booze, leading to the closure of taverns, bars, saloons, every fun place that you can meet people and have a good time, all shut down, as well as the removal of liquor from store shelves. However, despite the ban on sales, it's important to note that the amendment did not criminalize the act of drinking alcohol itself. So if you just found it, you were good. So it comes to no surprise that the consumption of alcohol persisted, probably even more so, but at that point, it was driven into an underground market dominated by criminal figures like Al Capone. That was until the amendment's repeal in 1933. Number eight, Olympic flag debut. During the 1920 Summer Olympics held in Belgium, a significant symbol of unity was introduced to the world. High jump. No, I'm just kidding. The Olympic flag in its current form. It consisted of five interlocking rings, and these rings were chosen to represent the harmonious connection between continents and nations, and this was following the aftermath of World War I. They're like, I got it. A nice flag, but also high jump. Please high jump. The event also witnessed the release of doves. How beautiful is that? This is a powerful symbol of peace, further emphasizing this desire, this dream for global harmony in the form of high jump. <laughs> it's so funny when people come together, they're like, yes, let's do it as a unity together. And all right, throw that javelin, try and beat that guy now. Good luck, break a leg. Number seven, Amelia Earhart's first flight. In the year 1897, Amelia Earhart was born, destined to make an incredible mark on aviation history. Her transformative journey began in 1920 when she had the opportunity to take her first ever airplane ride. All it as a passenger alongside the renowned World War I pilot, Frank Hawks. Now this experience proved to be quite pivotal. It ignited a deep passion within her for flight. And in her own words, Amelia expressed, as soon as we left the ground, I knew that I myself had to fly. Amelia Earhart wasted no time in pursuing her newfound ambition. She enrolled in flying lessons, displaying exceptional dedication and talent, obviously. And within a year, by 1921, she had already achieved the remarkable feat of flying solo, marking the beginning of her extraordinary journey as an aviator. I had a buddy trying to be a pilot and it took him so long. So the fact that you can do this in a year would be so good. Damn, with those like janky planes back then too, that are shaking as you're trying to get off the ground. No, that's incredible. Number six, Alexander Fleming. In September, 19. 28, Alexander Fleming, already a successful microbiologist at the time, just stumbled upon his greatest discovery entirely by chance. Must be nice. He's like, oh, we changed the world. Look at that. Upon returning to his laboratory after a well-deserved break, he observed some culture plates containing staphylococci that become contaminated with mold. And to his surprise, he noticed that the area surrounding this mold remained clear, indicating that it possessed a unique effect on said bacteria. Dubbing the strain penicillin, we love that, it's pretty good one. Fleming and his assistants embarked on a series of tests that would forever revolutionize the field of medicine. I'm like, thank you so much. Thank you, Alexander, for just looking down. That's so great. This accidental finding was hailed as the single greatest achievement in combating diseases, leading to the dawn of the antibiotic age. Again, we love that, especially today. We're like, yes, keep that up. Let's keep that science up, please. Number five. The sky is the limit. The 1920s witnessed remarkable advancements in aviation, right? As I just explained. Airplanes were becoming a widely accepted mode of transportation, but two significant milestones unfolded during this decade, shaping the course of aviation history. The first extraordinary achievement was by Charles Lindbergh, who embarked on a unprecedented solo flight way across the Atlantic Ocean. He flew from New York to Paris, May 1927. The historical feat captured the world's attention, showcasing the potential of aviation for long distance travel. Also 
also so terrifying to be the first person to fly over the ocean. I'd be like this the entire time. I'd be so, I couldn't breathe. I can't breathe right now, just talking about it. The following year, Amelia Earhart made her mark by becoming the first woman to traverse the same transatlantic route. Although she participated as a passenger, this sparked her entire life in history. So we'll say this is two in one. Number four, TV. How are you watching this? Are you watching it on your phone late at night? Should be sleeping, getting ready for work in the morning? Or are you watching it proudly on your TV? Also, should be going to sleep, but you're staying up watching YouTube. Nice. The first television invention dates back to the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Now, various inventors contributed to its development, took a few steps, that's for sure. But one notable pioneer was Philo Farnsworth. Great name also, Farnsworth, what a great, Great time. In 1927, Farnsworth successfully demonstrated the first fully functional electronic television system. And it was known back then as the image dissector. Yeah. Are you watching this on your image dissector right now? Give us a thumbs up on your dissector. Thank you. His invention utilized a cathode ray tube to capture and transmit images through a series of electronic components. I have no idea how it works, but I love that it does. Big fan of that. Farnsworth's breakthrough led to the foundation for advancements in television technology, leading to the widespread adoption of TV as a form of modern entertainment. Again, big fan. I have like four TVs, man. This is ruining my life, really. Number three, radio. Video killed the radio star, but they had a really good run for a bit there. They had a couple of good years. In the year 1920, a significant milestone in communication occurred with the launch of the first commercial radio station in the United States, KDKA, based in Pittsburgh. Now, this event marked a transformative shift in how Americans access news and spent their leisure time. A lot of time listening to radio after that. They just sat down and just listened for a bit. The radio quickly gained popularity and by the end of the 1920s, approximately 12 million households had radios. A lot of distractions going on. The invention of radio broadcasting revolutionized how we took information, entertainment, and cultural content, connecting people across the land. And also it was fun to listen to music. That's that's the most of what we do with that. Do you listen to the radio still? I feel like there's like two people that do and they're, they're both my grandparents. That's about it. Number two, American football. The birth of American professional football can be traced back to August 1920 when the American professional football Football Association was established, eventually evolving into the renowned National Football League, the NFL, which we all, of course, know. The sport itself had originated as a variation of rugby, incorporating elements from the other type of football as well, and then they began gaining popularity in the 1880s. But by the 1910s, football had emerged as a spectator sport. It was bringing in audiences all across the United States. Now it was starting to get real. I have no idea how to play football. I have no idea how to watch football either. I just look at them like, cool, who's winning? What are they doing? Why aren't they playing? Who's talking? I don't know. They're just throwing things in while they're trying to play. I have no idea. I'm more of a water polo kind of guy. You know what I mean? And finally, number one, voting rights. Of course, of course. The journey towards women's voting rights in America was far too long. It culminated in the passing of the 19th Amendment to the US Constitution in 1920, granting women the right to vote, finally. This achievement was the result of decades of activism, protest, and advocacy with the help of suffragettes Susan B. Anthony and Elizabeth Cady Stanton. The suffrage movement gained momentum in the late 19th and early 20th centuries as women fought for their political and social equality. The 19th Amendment marked a significant milestone in American history, of course. It expanded the democratic participation and it advanced gender equality. Cut to 100 years later, we're still working on it somehow. So hopefully we figure it out soon, right? Those are the top 10 unusual events from the roaring 20s. Do you believe we're in the roaring 20s again? Or are we in the boring 20s? I don't know. VR is making it, you know, a little interesting, but I think we're too far gone. I'm your host, Taylor McWaters. We'll see you next time on Bumblebee. Peace.